Las Vegas is making its debut as the home of the Party Poker US Open, a massive event with over 250 players competing for a prize fund of $300,000. It's one of the biggest events in the nine ball calendar, and we are now into the knockout stage. Our players have survived the double elimination stage. 256 players have been reduced to just 16. Eight of those players have come from the winner's bracket, which means they are undefeated. The other eight have come through the tougher route, having lost at least one match. This is now the knockout stage. It's a race to 11, with the winner breaking and a 40-second shot clock. We are well into the round of the last 16, and the big news here in Vegas is that Jason Shaw, the defending champion, is out. He fell to the world number one, Joshua Filler. He'll face Francisco Sanchez Ruiz, who beat the talented Ko Ping Chung by the same scoreline as Filler. Players from the Philippines have always performed well in nine balls major tournaments. Jeffrey De Luna is maintaining that tradition, dispatching England's Imran Majid in a tightly contested match. 11-9 the final score, and De Luna now faces Canada's Alex Pagalayan, who staged a remarkable comeback to claim his place in the quarterfinals. Shukai Lung grabbed a 6-1 lead over Liu Hai Tao, but then the fight back came. It looked to be in vain, but a final push saw the World Cup of Pool winner take the last five racks and a place in the next round. Confirmation of the results so far. World number one, Joshua Filler threw to meet Francisco Sanchez Ruiz in our first quarter final. Jeffrey De Luna ending the UK's interest in the tournament with the defeat of Imran Majid will now face Alex Pagulayan for a place in the semi-finals. In the bottom half of the draw, Shukai Lun lost out to Liu Hai Tao. And coming up, the clash between Jeffrey Ignacio, who will be hoping to make it two Filipino players into the last eight. But he faces Chang Yu Lung. Time then to meet the players. I don't know right now if I win this tournament, I don't know. But if I win this event, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> I'm gonna cry, definitely, absolutely, I'm gonna cry. The match opened with a dry break. Chang Yu Lung benefited, stepping in to claim the first rack of the match. The second produced yet another dry break, but this time with little in the way of openings. A push-out followed and the rack looked to go the way of Chang Yu Lung, but a miss on the nine proved costly. Rack three and the first successful break, although it presented few opportunities. Safety play followed, Chang Yu Lung came out on top to retake the lead. This is now the fourth commentary from Ted Lerner and Michael McMullen. There's a ball down, the one goes down, and he will have a shot on the two. One and the seven are down. He only lost one rack in his first two matches. Beat Arnold Peterson of Iceland and Luri Tang, his compatriot, 11-0 and 11-1 respectively. So that was 22 racks out of the 23 he played in his first two matches. But it got harder against Dennis Grabe of Estonia, 11-8. Then Aloysius Yap, who we saw involved in that amazing match earlier that he just lost to Alex Pagalayan. Well, Chang Yu Lung saw him off 11-5. And then in the winner's qualification round, he beat Imran Majid 11-9. Majid, who of course we also saw in a dramatic match earlier against Jeffrey De Luna.
just look at some of the countries there, Ted. Iceland, Estonia. We had nearly 50 different nationalities in the field here. It's by far the most international of all the Q sports in that sense. Yeah, there are players literally all over the world play this uh, sport. And ever since I've been covering pool, I've just seen every year the competition gets stiffer, better. There's more players, younger players coming through. It is truly amazing where they all come from and how good they are. So that's why people say this year, 256 players entered this event. And uh, ask anybody who's covered this sport for a long time, and they'll tell you the best field ever assembled. Well, that's the first break and run out we've seen in the match. And it gives Chang Yu Long a bit of breathing space at 3-1. This was a fine shot, really. Lots of spin on that, using a couple of rails. And once he'd done that, really, there was no looking back. The two quarterfinals that we saw that we know the lineup for, they'll be tomorrow afternoon, and then the two remaining quarterfinals tomorrow night. So it's going to be. Uh, Long enough day for the players who come through the last 16 matches in the morning. But look how close he was to scratching there, coming off both jaws of that side pocket. And unfortunately for him, he's angled on the one. I don't think he can see it because the cue ball is looks, appears to be too far inside that pocket to get to the one. Yeah, there you see it there. Push out. That's the snooker term, angled, Ted. Is there, is there a different particular term for that in nine ball? This what, situation in, here? In the pocket? Like this in the pocket? That'll do. Mm. Yeah. Hmm. Good question. Don't think so. Well, I mean, I think there is a term for stuck in the jaws. Well, maybe we'll borrow the snooker term Mr. for now. Matthew, your choice. Angled. Angled, yes. When the angle of the pocket is blocking the cue ball from hitting... Uh, or being hit where you want it to go. See, we're educating each other here in our respective terminologies, Ted. <laughs> it's a transatlantic terminology exchange. Yeah, that's very good. Thank you for that. I could think of some words that he, he's probably thinking, but I don't think we can say them on a family channel. Wow, that was a that was some shot. We'll we'll have to get another look at that. That was Yeah, I think we're gonna see that again now. We might wait and see him attempt the two first. Well he took it on because he he did not take it on because there was no positional value for the three. Let's have a look at the one again. Nice soft touch there. But you can see the three ball back down table married up against the four. So he decided to play safe because even potting that two ball wouldn't have gotten him anything to do for the three. So he'll leave that to Jeffrey. Got away with it. Yeah, that side pocket jaw intervening again. It's playing a starring role in this rack. The 
He's going to like that. It's only 3 1. It's not a massive lead yet, but it's one of those situations if Chang Yu Long gets much further ahead. And then Ignacio is really up against it because we've seen often throughout this US Open already how important momentum can be, particularly in the winner's break or winner breaks format. Yeah, it was nice and easy there, really, to roll in behind the three and the four. Yep, natural wall of balls. And he does a nice job of uh, getting that cue ball up against that, I think is the three. So, of course, the closer you are to that, uh, that ball, like he is with the three, limits the angles in which your opponent can get out. Extension, please. You're welcome. Well, no surprise to see him taking the extension. Got to take care with this. He knows if he gets it wrong, could be handing the rack away. Foul, no contact. Hold the clock, please. Still, the three is in a funny position. It is lined up with the nine. The clock, please. Yeah, that's just a sitting target, really, for a three-nine combination. But it does go into the other pocket. And that's where he's going to take it. Quite a bit of distance between the three and the nine, so it would have been a risky combination to play, and that's why, as you say, Ted, he took the direct route. And he remains a big favorite for this rack anyway. Yeah, Chang looks the looser of the two. Ignacio seems a bit tight, maybe he's nervous. And that difference is reflected in the score line right here. Yeah, I think that bears out what you're saying, Ted. And I agree. I thought they both looked a bit intense early on. But no doubt about it, Chang Yu Lung has settled into the match better. There's a more composed demeanor about him. He's so fluid. He's, he's really... Uh, Fun to watch. Because he seems to play without fear. So Chang Yu Lung now, four to one up. Welcome back to Las Vegas for the 2019 US Open. Here at the Mandalay Bay, Chang Yu Lung has dominated the early stages of this match. He led 4-1 against Jeffrey Ignacio going into the sixth. He continued that domination with a break and run out. This is now the seventh. Jeffrey Ignacio, he is uh, looking extremely tight, a bit nervous, and uh, he tried to shake off those ne those negative vibes by uh, during the break he left the arena headed to the men's room all the talk has been about shane van boning jason shaw joshua filler now but i know you firmly believe ted 
And I agree with you, this man is eminently capable of winning this US Open on Friday. Well, anybody who was, who's won the China Open two times, he won the World Cup of Pool, he's been in the semifinals of the World Nine Ball Championship. He's one of the best players in the world, and he was a former, uh, he is a former number one player in the world. Betting to become the second player from Taipei to win the title. Kevin Cheng back in 2015 was the first. And he is uh, set up here to keep the racks rolling. This could be his third break and run out in the last four. But so many top players from Taipei, and indeed so many players have actually reached the very top. Quite a number of them have been ranked number one at various stages, Ted. Now look at this. He's a little too straight to use an angle, so he uses the backspin to get all the way down table. He's not afraid to uh, play a power shot like that. Man, that was... He is uh, playing himself into a very confident match right here. Meanwhile, Jeffrey Ignacio is almost a uh, forgotten part of this match. Yeah, he's got good Q power and it's controlled Q power, which is very effective. Ooh, that was in danger of finishing a bit unpleasant, but he's fine. Maybe a little further than he wanted, but if you've been watching this match for the last 30 minutes, you know that this is nothing for this guy. It's a one-way wow. street at the moment. Five in a row and back-to-back -back runouts from the break. 6-1, Chang Yu Long leads. You know, we had four Taiwanese in this uh, final 16. And uh, this was this great shot on the six in which he was too straight in to play an ordinary shot down table. So he had to juice it back and look at that with absolutely perfect position. Well, this could change things a bit. He's come up dry for the third time already in this match. And he's left the one sitting right over the pocket there. So this is what Ignacio needs now. He's not been enjoying this match, as you said, and it's been in danger of passing him by. He's got his opportunity here to turn it round. How can he respond after spending so much time in his chair? He's looking at this with a bit of concern, though. When he needs it to go, he would have liked to... I'm not sure if that passes into the corner. It, would have, it definitely goes into the side. Hard to tell from that angle. He's fidgeting around. He, it doesn't appear that it goes into the corner. It's a tough call from Section, here. Can't, please. can't really see. When you're struggling, 
things go against you. You just don't get those few extra inches of run you're looking for. The little nudges that you want. Oh, that was a nice shot, but look oh, out. Oh, he scratched. He's scratch. Oh, that's really unfortunate. Hold the clock, please. That was a very aggressive play, and hats off to him for playing it, but the Start scratch. The clock, wow, that could, that could really spell doom. Oh, yeah, I mean, we were saying he wasn't in a great frame of mind as it was. Now he's really going to be feeling that the poor gods are against him. Yeah. An aggressive play that uh, turned against him at the last second. Too bad for Jeffrey Ignacio. Be nice to see him give it a run, but uh, that's going to be ver very demoralizing. It was like he was trying to underline what I was saying about how when you're struggling, you don't get the run of the ball. You know, we've basically been going non-stop for eight hours now. There was a bit of a gap after the morning session, but because the matches have been so close, there was no gap between the afternoon and evening sessions, and it's really just been relentless drama throughout that time. 11-9, 11-10, 11-9. But this is a totally different state of affairs. Ignacio really must be starting to fear the worst now. When it got to 4-1-5-1, still plenty of hope. And what's really going to be hard to take here is that he did get his chance, but things just didn't fall his way. He had a bit of misfortune in the end to scratch. And Chang Yu Long makes it six on the bounce. Welcome back to the 2019 US Open, and here in Vegas, Chang Yu Lung is surging ahead against Jeffrey Ignacio. He leads 7 1. This is now the ninth commentary from Ted Lerner and Michael McMullen. Chang Yu Lung uh, certainly has the credentials to prove that he is one of the best over the last five years in Asia. Former WPA number one, won the China Open, which is considered a major in this sport. That's funny, you know, he's 7-1 up, but he hasn't broken that well overall. Well, that was perhaps his best break yet. He's got a ball down, easy one, guaranteed position on the two. You mentioned Ko Pinyi there, Ted. He, of course, teamed up with Chang Yu Long to win the 2015 World Cup for Taipei in London. Beat Estonia, then Poland, then Austria. They then beat the number one seeds, England, Darren Appleton and our friend and colleague, Carl Boyce. Then they beat the England B team in the final. It was a close one, 10-8. Saw off Mark Gray and Daryl Peach. And in defense of the title the following year, they put up a good show in their bid to retain it. Got to the semi-finals, But their run was eventually ended by a very strong US pairing of Shane Van Boning and Skylar Woodward. Well, you are, consider yourself privileged to be watching one of the best. It's generally been the tone of the match. 
If he has a good break, he runs out from it. He's had three dry breaks, but most of the time, if he's potted something off the break and had a shape, it's been effectively rack over. And that tight, cagey start seems a distant memory now. Chang Yu Lung looks like he wants an early night. He's only three racks away from the quarterfinals. He leads a disconsolate looking Jeffrey Ignacio by eight racks to one. And he only needs another three to claim a place in the last eight. Well, it may not be a great battle between two stars of pool, but it is a pleasure to watch Chang Yu Lung do his thing. He is some player. And the ominous thing here is that it's pretty much been the story that whenever he's potted something off the break and had a shape at the next ball, he's gone on to win the rack from there. And did a nice job there developing that three ball, which is his next object ball. He's got to come all the way down for, he's going to find a space in the middle of the table for the four. And he's going to bring it back up table for the five and then back down for the six. So he's, uh, he's got plenty of room to maneuver that cue ball. All the players who made it this far to the last 16 single elimination stage guaranteed three and a half thousand dollars and it goes up quickly after that. Whoever wins this will be guaranteed then a minimum of six thousand two hundred and fifty. And from then on, you're more or less doubling your money. 12,000 for the semi finalists, goes up to 25 for the runner up, and 50,000 for the winner on Friday. But that's somewhere in the distance, and uh, in the here and now, he's not played that ideally, Ted. Yeah, he overhit that. Extension, please. And given where the six is, it was more important than ever to be in a good position on this. Oh, oh. well. What he was trying to do, he did manage to do. Trouble was, clock, he scratched at the same time. What? Well, you get an idea into the thinking of Chang Yu Long. Clock, that please. was a pretty clever effort there. Unfortunately for him, it didn't work because he scratched. But look at that. He was on track to get it in position for the six ball. Would have been one of the shots of the tournament if he'd managed to pull it off. And he wasn't far away, but surely now Ignacio is going to snap Chang Yu Lung's long streak. Ignacio has lost the last seven racks. Well, he can't be thinking about the bigger picture right now. It's just one shot at a time. Just get in a rhythm. 
Yeah, don't be thinking about winning the match, just think about staying in it. Nothing goes down. More misery for the Filipino. It's only the second uh, break off shot he's played in the match. Neither of them has gone particularly well. He did pop the one ball off the other one, but didn't get a shape. And the way Chang Yu Long has been eating up this sort of chance throughout the match, Ignacio's attempted comeback could prove to be a very brief one. We've seen players come back from positions like this before, Ted, of course we have, and we will again. Problem is, Ignacio just doesn't look like he believes he can turn it round. He seems entirely devoid of confidence. That's correct. And so much of this game is uh, happens between your ears. That was a nice shot. Could have uh, gotten a few applause for that. Brought it right around the six ball. Well, the crowd are probably tired at the end of a long day. Don't have the <laughs> energy to clap anymore, Ted. But what a day they've seen. Fantastic matches and some great performances earlier. Jason Shaw and Francisco Sanchez Ruiz both winning their matches comfortably. That's not gone to plan, though. Now, if he's going to try this, he's going to have to uh, reach for it, too. And he's going to lean, like, almost lay down on top of the table. You have to have one foot on the ground, of course. Oh, when he got the oh, nine. Oh, can you no. believe that? When it's your day, it's really your day. And a complete fluke, he knocks the nine ball in. I mean, he, he was about to give up the table. He missed that ball. And he well, apologizes to Jeffrey Ignacio, who gives a knowing grin. Well, the funny thing is, I think that's the only time we've seen Ignacio smile in the whole match. That's almost impossible. But it did happen. He misses the five. <laughs> Look at him. He's almost embarrassed. Welcome back to the opening round in the knockout stage of the 2019 US Open. It's Chang Yu Lung who is in charge in this match with Jeffrey Ignacio. He leads the man from the Philippines by 9-2 and he's just two racks away from a place in the quarterfinals. Well, he does not have as much experience on the big time TV table as Chang Yu Lung. And that really makes a difference when you're talking about an event of the magnitude of the U.S. Open. I mean, this event's been going on for over 40 years. Talk to anyone in the pool world. This is the one event they want to win. Yeah, the World Championship is good, but the U.S. Open always attracts the best field in pool. So when you come out here on this TV table, it's a completely different environment. It's going to be uh, it's going to take something special to win this. Oh, and a length of the table back oh, shot. I think, I think you're just gonna, we're just gonna sit back and enjoy this for the rest of the way because he is, he's feeling it. He, when, when this guy is hot. 
there's really not many players who can reach his level of excitement. He's showing us the full range of shots. This would be his fifth break and run out of the match if he completes it. If he does win the match, it'll mean our six winners today will be from six different countries. That was the shot that really opened things up for him. It's just the best feeling, isn't it, Ted, when you get into this zone where everything's going your way, you feel confident about every shot. Just the best feeling in the world, and you just want to stay out there all night. And he knows his opponent is didn't show up, so there's no pressure. I feel bad for Jeffrey because uh, I hope this loss, he's certainly headed for a loss. It's going to take a miracle to come back, and we don't see it in the cards, but I hope it doesn't have any long-term effect as far as his ability to play on TV table because he is super talented. He is certainly one of the, whoa, look out. Ooh, how has that not gone down? <laughs> this guy, the pool gods are smiling down on him today, but that was a poor shot right there. Let's see him go after this though. Yeah, well, this is the bit of consolation for Ignacio. Okay, so the scratch didn't happen, but this isn't an absolute certainty, so there is a glimmer of hope. However, as you say, not a huge amount of pressure on Chang Yulong. He's got a very Chang big Chang, lead please. against an opponent who's clearly feeling out of sorts. But even with a lack of pressure, this is still a test. But it's a test he's passed. Chang Yulong is on the hill. He leads Jeffrey Ignacio by 10 racks to two and is one away from the quarterfinal. Well, the five is down, but has he got the shape on the one here? Does not appear that he does. We'll get a better look here. Ah. Mm, touch and go, isn't it? Hard to see from that angle. Yeah. He might, actually. Yeah. Bit of work to do to get on the two, even if he does have the shape on the one. Well, he's getting down on it like it yeah, does go. I he's think got this goes angle yeah. for the two. Wow. Oh, no, oh, you're kidding. Surely this isn't going to happen. No, you're kidding. No way. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, that would have been too much. Well, too much to ask. Yeah, the same gravity that kept the cue ball out of the side pocket at the end of the previous rack has denied him this time. Watch this. The cue ball comes back across table and very nearly nudges that one into the pocket. That would have been rubbing salt in a very open wound of Jeffrey Ignacio. Well, it looked as if any contact at all when the cue ball was coming back towards it was bound to knock it in, but it nudged it and it still didn't drop. Well, Jeffrey can uh, free will it here. What we mean by that. He's got nothing to lose, basically. That's it. No pressure. So... Just like you're at the pool hall, banging balls. And sometimes you see in a winner breaks format when guys 
adopt that mentality, the freewheeling style, that they can uh, somehow play their way back in it. It's a shame he wasn't like that at the start of the match because he looked to be putting a huge amount of pressure on himself and wasn't enjoying it, as you said. Well, this is really freewheeling now. It's like watching uh, some of the shots Tom Cruise played in The Color of Money. Yeah, you'll see a lot of Filipinos doing that. Well, this is... Uh, he should get this. Yeah, nice to see him get another one. He's not had the best of luck in this match. He's not helped himself at times, but the run of the ball has conspired against him on a few occasions. So that makes it look a little bit better. But if that one had dropped, Ted, I think we can both agree it probably would be all over by now. So I think he'd play the positional side of it quite well and would have been on the two. There it is. Yeah, he'd come across for the two, but just forgot to pot the one. There's a ball down. Yeah, the three is in. And he's got a shot on the one. Well, the longer he can maintain that nothing to lose attitude, the more chance he'll have of getting himself back into this. Playing in the US Open. It's a big deal, it's a big experience. If nothing else, he'll want to prolong it as long as possible. Oh, but that's not going to help. That's quite poor, I think you'd have to say. Yep, you can't sugarcoat that. Well, it turns out, uh, Michael, he was not freewheeling it. He was very careless with that. Yeah, now he's got a look of resignation on his face. He's not beaten yet, of course, but... It's a definite chance now for Chang Yulong to close out this match. A match which looked early on like it was going to be a long, close affair. But it's turned out to be anything but. When you look at this performance from Chang Yu Long Ted, how close is that to how well you feel someone is going to have to play to win this tournament? That's it. He's, uh, this is a performance not quite as uh, breathtaking as Joshua Filler, but it's up there. It's one of the better ones we've seen. And if you look back at his campaign so far in the double elimination stage, Chang Yu Lung was undefeated, and he's been playing very well. When this guy is on, he is clearly one of the best in the world. He's the only two-time China Open champion, former world number one. I think there'll be better days ahead for Jeffrey Ignacio. And there's still a prospect here now that this day could continue a little longer for him because he's slightly overrun on this seven, has Chang Yu Long. It is a cruel and lonely sport at times, Michael. It's uh, as all Q sports are, you've, you're out there by yourself and very much. Uh, exposed to the world and it's easy to criticize these guys from the uh you know the armchair experts the keyboard warriors well this is over now he's come slightly the wrong side of the eight ball but it's not a problem for him so chang yu long has been dominant. He's got stronger and stronger as it's gone on. He's 
beaten Jeffrey Ignacio by 11 racks to three. It's the most comfortable win we've seen all day. And it takes him into a US Open quarterfinal tomorrow against Lou Hightow. Joshua Filler was the first man into the quarterfinals. He will now face Francisco Sanchez Ruiz. The Philippines do have a man in the last eight, Jeffrey De Luna winning against Imran Majid. And Alex Pagulayan came through a tight match against Aloysius Yap. In the bottom half of the draw, Liu Hai Tao takes on the winner from our last match, Chang Yu Lung. Still to play, Xu Juyan against Wang Kan, and then finally, Shane Van Boning, who's chasing a record-breaking sixth title. He's up against Wu Jiaqing in the Party Poker US Open.